All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully, uh, it's a good morning, good afternoon, good evening for you guys, uh, wherever you are. I'm um, happy to uh, kick off this uh, session for uh, C Security. Let's get started. Thank you. So um, today's topic of uh, our session is going to be usage of NIST cybersecurity framework in our organization. Um, let me intro myself. Uh, my name is Umar Rajagopal. All right, so I'll quickly go over. Uh, I so currently work at Amazon and is industry specialist, and uh, I do have uh, industry certifications. Um, the reason I took a lot of industry certification is to make sure that uh, I am responsible in um, learning all the domains. So feel free to uh, take any certification that does not belong to your domain, but hopefully uh, you will be able to gauge uh, your knowledge on those. Um, definitely will help you uh, level set the overall uh, perspective on cybersecurity. I'm a constant learner, mostly on cyber these days, um, being on an advisory board on a couple of various uh, security platforms. And I'm author of this book. I recently uh, published this book and uh, co-author of Zero Trust Architecture for CSATC research chapter. All right, let's talk about uh, today's agenda. So what are the components of the framework, right, on the NIST, uh, on the NIST the CSF that we are going to talk about and why this framework is valuable for us and what type of organization can use this framework? And we will wrap up with uh, an example of a cyber risk mapping. All right, let me uh, go through an example of uh, home office. I just want to make we are all okay. Uh, we, I would like to go see, we are all good now, all good. Can anyone give me a thumbs up? Okay, great. Sorry again for all of this, uh, not from the beginning, from the scrunch slide. Okay, um, I just want to level set uh, this NIST framework. I just want to make it simple and easy because there are a lot of frameworks out there in the industry. And I want to make sure that you understand the foundation basic of what it is so that you can go ahead and uh, um, implement it in your organization. So you all have seen your home office, you know, with the COVID, we had been forced to work from home. And at um, the uh, uh, end of the day, we have not only spouse and us uh, start working from home we also have kids starting to use our space to study from home so when you think about it you have the office room have a lot of sensitive data it could be your tax document to your confidential uh, private um, you know medical records to a public flyer information to school information is all scattered around your near home office right and uh, what you want to get is what your target state should be and organize the clean uh, desk and not only clean desk, we are also making sure that the sensitive data is organized, locked. And if anybody has access, um, you are able to detect it before um, anything happens. And also um, this place is also um, accessible for your guests. If it is, uh, then you want to make sure who is coming in. Um, so you have that visibility is what you wanted to get to as an ultimatum. How do you get there from left side to the right side? Obviously, you will use some frameworks. I'm sure you would have used some framework to organize your house, right? Um, you know, one of the framework says that uh, set every every ten minutes, set ten minutes every day to to clean up. Or you would have a framework that says, hey, start from left to right or top to bottom. Some kind of framework that you use that helps you to go from um, you know your current state to the target state. So that's the framework that we are going to talk about it um, later in the slides. And then. You will also assess yourself to how did a uh, value did. Um, do you have a system that takes you from uh, state one to state three? Um, I also want to make sure that you have correct control or set up in place. That all will be determined in the tier that we are going to talk about it uh, later um, in few slides. So 
basically you are going to be implementing um, tighter control uh, for sensitive information, but not so tight control for uh, flyers, right? So you need to make sure you have the classification also built in, uh, which is also going to go tied and tied up into your tires. Just keep this framework in mind, um, uh, this uh, real classic example. Again, it, this is not one-to-one. -one. Uh, we are also going to make sure that we will apply this concept slightly into the framework that we are going to talk about. So what is this uh, CSF, right? Um, this is the, the framework that helps the organization to implement some processes, basically to identify and uh, either eliminate or mitigate risk. Um, not only eliminating, also making sure you are detecting and responding, recovering from cyber attacks. So what, my, what I mean by that is um, you are going to be implementing some guidelines and practices uh, that this framework that provides you. So this framework, especially framework was developed as part of, uh, you know, Mr. President Obama's executive order back in 2013, uh, which is called 13636 for improving critical infrastructure um, security. But this can be applied for any number of industry that um, we will talk about it in a minute, um, you know, and as an example where um, Kansas City University has applied. So this framework is ongoing. This is not set in stone. You have different versions uh, that are getting developed. Uh, so one recent version was um, modified um, according to 2021 uh, recent executive order by President Biden um, to enhance the cybersecurity again. Uh, this is directly in result of our solar wind uh, uh, supply chain attack. So constantly you will have the CL CSF have um, different versions that you you may want to look into and apply whatever is applicable for you. So let's talk about what this framework is all about. So this framework is basically, as I mentioned, it's a collection of best practices or guidelines that an organization should follow and manage right, um, in order to identify what your risk posture is. So you would have your organization could have multiple uh, risk, like 10, 12, for example, but you would still want to identify what your top level ones are um, and then um, uh, have address them according to the uh, impact that your organization have. So, so it aims to reduce the organization exposure by identifying the right areas for you. What other frameworks are in the industry? There are multiple frameworks. As you can see, there are risk uh, management framework, and also there is uh, CIS controls, and there is um, ISO. So this NIST framework, as you can uh, see from, from the other slides, that this activity, the NIST framework contains certain activities that are directly relating to the CIS control. So basically, it tells you to implement some control and which will also indirectly you will comply with the many uh, compliance, many regulations is what the idea is. Um, so basically what this, this framework is going to uh, provide you is uh, just one quick example I also want to provide, uh, give you is here. Let's say you have a, a restaurant, right? The restaurant, you you have some menu and you have, you have some customers um, coming in and then uh, you also find out that there are some other restaurants nearby having a different type of uh, results that you're not able to get it. So use this CSF to your advantage where you're able to assess what the risks are and able to identify them and able to apply um, in order to be uh, your business ad advantage as well. Um, that's one of the um, major advantage of uh, using these frameworks. Let's quickly go through the components of this framework. This consists of three major things. One is core, second one is profile and tiers. So basically core is the core where you have about 23 cyber activities um, or functions that would I call um, and there are 108 distinct outcome that comes out of these functions. We will again go into more details on those core. Um, then you have profiles. A profile is basically talks about where you are, uh, your current current profilers, because not all activities or functions will apply to you. So maybe 
20 functions apply to you or maybe 80 activities outcomes are applied to you so you will definitely you have to define what your profile is and then you will also find out where you are in terms of um, your current state to where you want to go in the target state is going to be your target and the tier is going to determine where you want it to be you could have um, a good robust system um, but at what cost right so you need to find out where you want it you need to find your right balance always keep in mind whenever you have security implemented you are also blocking the functionality so when uh, so there has to be a balance between your security to the functionality we are here in order to enable the business so that's where the tier comes in um, to identify where you want to go in uh, in terms of target all right let's move on to what the core is so the core is basically help with the organization doing those activities and also provide the outcome. So for example, if I want to say, um, I want to implement a password complexity, um, that's any, uh, there, there are a number of ways for you to implement the password complexity. But what is your outcome? Your outcome is, um, making sure that you have a password then you know your uh, um, as users are not sharing the password not writing down anywhere on the system or not sharing it anywhere online or post-it notes so that is the outcome but implement the uh, implementation of password complexity is your control you could have any control you that doesn't matter but the outcome has to be it has to fulfill and also the advantage of uh, implementing this core functionality is you secure once comply many approach what i mean by that is um let's say your organization is um in healthcare um uh, and also you um you are processing using these uh, credit card numbers for whatever reason so in that case if you um password complexity pass is one of the um, uh, control that you have to implement it on both um, which means by implementing one control you are basically uh, fulfilling uh, two compliance is what um what the secure ones comply many approach means let's go on to more on the core um, the core as i mentioned you have five uh, functions right you have identify protect detect respond and recover so identify um, talks about your data classification for example you have a sensitive data is it sensitive or not sensitive if it is sensitive what kind of level you want to um, protect right so again one easy example would be um, if your tax data in your home office is going to be sensitive not so much as you know flyers right so you don't want to apply a lock system for your flyers but you want to apply uh, more controls on the tax document or any confidential data. So those are the um, the uh, function that you would have to identify. This framework will help you to identify what they are by going through the activities of these uh, sub functions where identify had what your assets is and what your governance look like and what your risk assessment will look like and move on to protect and we'll talk about what kind of access control you have do you want uh, read only or do you want to make sure you um, you know access is controlled and reviewed um, annually or you know quarterly depending on what type of data you're dealing with and you also have to make sure do you have awareness training um, applied to your organization so those are the some function that you may want to get into details and, and i will go into zoom in into those sub functions as well you as you can see you have a subcategory um, within the sub function to t go more into those control that directly maps to your iso controls as well or COVID control that you have already implemented um, as good as implementing those control would satisfy um, the indirectly to those category uh, that you are trying to apply controls on all right so the framework um we already talked about the framework right this is going to be a tailored version of your core functions so what um 
so out of these, let me go back into the uh, functions here, right? So out of this identify, okay, you want, you obviously want to have access management. You obviously want to have some governance, but you don't want to necessarily apply all the subcategory. It might not be applicable for you. If they are not applicable for you, then um, that's, you know, you don't have to worry about, you don't have to generate the questionnaires against those. And that is going to become your profile. That would be your, um, you you are a current profile where where you are in terms of cybersecurity posture in your organization and then you will identify where you want to go so if you have a data classification if you have not identified um, this particular data set is not confidential or um, highly restricted uh, that's where you want to go to you want to make sure you have um, a proper processes and system in place in order to identify those um, those properly and, and apply the controls properly so that's your target set in in that outcome or in that control and then you will have to identify where you want to go from, how you want to go from uh, profile, current profile to the target profile is uh, the exercise that we are going to talk about in, in CR map. All right, so let's move on to tiers. What do you mean by tiers here in this scenario? For example, in, in our home office, right, um, exercise that we had, you can uh, have uh, just access control implemented um, as step one. Um, you may want to have a manual entry that comes in. Um, whoever is coming in into your office, they can have a manual entry. So that would be your manual. Maybe that would be partial. That would be your tier one. And then if you want to go to tier two, uh, maybe you have a system that uh, they can scan and come into your office. Then um, you have a tier three where you have a repeatable process to find out if someone is not coming in, badging in, or there is no access control. You want to make sure you are identifying those anomaly and also trigger some kind of alarm or uh, report um, that uh, you know tells you, hey, this this particular process is not um, it is getting violated. They are not following the process, so that would be your repeatable. And adaptive would be. Um, if that violation occur, um, immediately your uh, door to your library or office room is closed. So that would be um, adopted where that's a high level of uh, a high level of security you want to achieve. So um, basically, tier one to tier two to tier three and tier four, you have to find out where uh, what is applicable for you. Again, this is also very um, in terms of domain. So for example, if you have an HR system, um, tier three to four would make sense because they are sensitive data. What if, if you have a public information, you talk about your product um, to the public, it's already a public information, then you don't want to have, um, you know, tier four, right? You can just stop in tier one or tier two. Um, so they, that might not be risk. So you have to identify which area you want to apply this tier three or tier four. Um, obviously there has to be a balance uh, between um, where you want to go to, uh, you know, from your current status to where you want to go based off of your risk profile. So obviously you have to make sure you consider the tier you want to go. We also touched upon importance of outcome, right? I want to make sure the outcomes are not control. So the control could be, you know, the technical controls could be, you could have a technical control for that outcome, or you could have administrative control for that outcome. But the outcome has to be well-defined and you have to make sure the outcome is measured and you know it's, it's implemented for you. So each outcome will be um, written as a requirement. Um, so in our password example, I want to make sure MFA is implemented. Uh, then that would be your requirement and uh, that would be converted into your CR map as, as a questionnaire. So let's talk about what NIST 
uh, cyber security uh, framework is and is not. So it is not a checklist. You are not, this is, again, this is a mandatory, this is not a mandatory, this is an optional, this gives you a framework, this is just a framework uh, you would use to go from uh, state A to state B. So this is definitely not a checklist and is definitely not a mandatory compliance. If you want to get PEC IDS as compliant, it, you definitely not, you don't need to have a CFS, but it will, by implementing CFS will get you there faster. Um, this basically what it is, is give you a broader, um, uh, broader and broader perspective on what you want to um, apply in your organization to meet the needs of your cybersecurity uh, in your organization is what the CFS is. It's just a framework and it gives you a flexibility to achieve the outcomes that we wanted um, in order to be either to be uh, compliant and also to meet your, uh, uh, meet your local and uh, um, you know, regional or federal regulations for you. Okay, so what type of organization can use this? Any um, organization or type of organization use this because as I said, this is just a framework and any, um, you know, some of the organization that are used is here. Um, if you are in financial industry or health industry or even in federal, any organization can use this. All right, now the important factor. Important factor is the CR map. Um, I believe I have only have five more minutes to go. I'm just going to make sure I'm going to go faster here. So cybersecurity map is basically create a questionnaire for you. Um, it, it has three phases. Phase one to make sure you very, you know, find out where you are by, by conducting a lot of interviews across, across your organization. And then the phase two would be taking those answers and trying to find out uh, where you are now and, and try to find out where you want to go. And those three, phase three will be checking on it monthly to make sure you are doing uh, what you are supposed to be doing and you're not, um, you know, not losing your uh, side. So basically you wanted to widen your scope and generate those questionnaires into your organization. Um, if you are trying to come up with a questionnaire on your access management, then you have to generate the questionnaire about, hey, can you identify all your laptops or um, your, you know, uh, your uh, BYOD um, uh, devices, uh, were you able to identify your printers? So all of those questionnaires should be asked to throughout your organization and uh, get them answered. Um, and, and, and that would be averaged and scored in order to find your current posture. So you can, you know, as you can see, you have certain average responses on the top, it says 1.4 and the minimum is five, but you wanted to go into the target of six and your gap is 4.6 is what you will be getting out of this exercise. Um, so basically know your score and then come up with your target and find your scope and work on it. And this is a kind of example of where, how you can score them. Um, obviously you will have to do a review on a monthly check-in and quarterly check-ins uh, to make sure you are on, on par with your progress. Uh, the, the business value um, is basically, again, with you, by implementing CFS will give you um, I give you the list of, you know, what your financial return in terms of cost saving because you have implemented those uh, secure ones and comply many. And also it will be helpful in your disaster recovery or making sure where your data is. Um, generally overall awareness to, um, to the cybersecurity on your uh, organization is what is going to give you. Um, the case studies, uh, I, you know, University of Kansas Medical Center actually uh, tried to implement this. Uh, they conducted, they followed four step process where they uh, held a kickoff meeting with, uh, with the, the entire organization um, to tell them the importance of cybersecurity. And uh, they met with the executive to get their buy in to make sure this is what they're planning to implement and they developed the assessment questions, sent it across to the entire organization to have them answer and they developed a crosswalk between your current state to the target state and obviously they implemented those controls that they were lagging or um, you know basically uh, change their policies and revise their policies uh, in order to get there to the target state. So 
as a result, everybody understood what the cyber security meant uh, for that organization. Again, you have to make sure um, if you are in healthcare, confidentiality may not be as uh, important as um, saving the life. So you have to make sure um, you know what is important in your organization. So employees begin to understand, and um, um, the, they were able to provide uh, the, um, uh, the uh, they are able to provide the answers uh, to. Uh, accurately to make sure that we were able to determine where we were and then we were able to determine where we wanted to go. So that's the conclusion. We um, went through core profile and tiers and uh, we talked about what the target should be and make sure that uh, it aligned with the, where your businesses. Otherwise, security is not going to be meaningful. Um, I can be contacted here. I'm sorry to rush, rush through, but uh, if there are any Q&A, please go ahead and let me know. All right, uh, any questions I will be able to answer. Apology for the technical issues. Uh, yes, the slides are, uh, will be able to provide you the slides. If not, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I will be able to uh, give you more information. I can walk you through a specific examples. Um, yeah, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you all. I uh, hope to see you guys on other sessions.